Hey, praise the Lord, everybody. This is Minister Kevin Daniel, motivational, inspirational speaker out of the Metro Detroit area. Amen. Today is Monday, March the 30th, 2015. And brothers and sisters, this is the day that the Lord has made and we all shall rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to come to you with a word today that God placed in my heart called a meeting at the well, talking about the well experience, the woman at the well. And before I go into this in John chapter four, starting at verse seven, I want to share with my viewers. I know that I have such a wide range of viewers out there, but I want to let you know that whether you are a pastor, whether you are a minister or evangelist, a leader or a teacher of the Bible, amen, I want to let you know that these videos are made to reach the audience that's not really in church. They're made to reach those people who may go to church, but they have no idea what's going on because a lot of things may be spoken over their head and they don't understand this 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 thing that we call um, faith. They don't understand this following. They don't understand understand even the word of God because they, they hear it, but they don't really understand it. And so these videos are to bring it down to the level of where an everyday person can understand what God is doing. At John chapter four, talking about the woman at the well, and we're going to be just really sum this up. Here you have Jesus who has been traveling and he approaches this well, amen, and there's a Samaritan woman, amen, a Samaritan woman who's at the well. And the first thing we have to understand is that Jesus is at this well, and the Samaritan woman has been coming to this well quite often, amen. She's been coming to this well, but every time she left the well, she never came back with water. Every time she came back um, from the well, she her purpose was to go and get water, so she said, but every time she came back from the well, she never came back with water. Let me tell you about this woman. This woman had voids. This woman had areas in her, in her life that was never fulfilled. This woman had areas in her life where she was fulfilling it with the wrong things, okay? She had an area in her life where she went said she was getting one thing, but she always came back with something else. So here we are. We have a woman, and I want you to put somebody else. It doesn't always have to be a woman, but it could be a woman. It could be a man, a boy, or a girl. You have an individual who have voids in their life. You have an individual who have some areas that's broken, and you know um, their, their reputation has been tanked, uh, tarnished. Their image has been tarnished because they got those areas, those empty, empty places in their lives that have not been healed, that have not been restored for whatever reason. So here we are, we have this woman that happened to be at the right place at the right time. So who does she meet? She meet Jesus at the well. But look at this, she looks at Jesus as ordinary man because if you look in John chapter um, four, let's look at this, uh, Jesus goes and he, the first thing he says was, give me to drink. And so this woman says, the Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans, okay? So Jesus said, you know, look beyond that. I know what you are and I know what I am, but I'm asking you for something to drink. Tradition, um, traditional um, rules and boundaries and all of this stuff, walls are broken when true ministry takes place. Jesus knew what his identity was and he knew what his history and bloodline was. But what he saw was an opportunity for ministry. And I want to let you know right now that no matter where you come from, no matter what color you are, no matter what your background is, no matter what your social status is, that every time that you are in a position where there is ministry, that where ministry can take place, the Lord will put you in the right place at the right time so that God can pour into your life. So don't ever think, don't ever think that there is not an opportunity for God to touch your life because it shows even right here that Jesus himself was at the right place at the right time to serve the right purpose. In verse um, number 10, in verse 10, it says, Jesus answered and says, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you the living water. Jesus said, if you knew who I was, if you knew my purpose here, then this whole conversation would be changed. But Jesus had to allow the platform to be built so ministry can take place. Verse 11 says, the woman said to him, sir, look at that. The woman calls him sir. So refers to him as just like an average man. But because of Jesus being a humble person that he was, because of Jesus being a humble man that he was, he didn't let that affect him because he allowed the more that this woman spoke, the more he was able to see the picture that was being painted for ministry to take place. That is what we even have to learn how to do. We got to learn how to listen because sometimes we can see a person from the outside or we can hear the way a person speaks and we quickly begin to paint the picture. But God says you got to be patient, allow people to speak because you never know how God is going to use that conversation for ministry to take place. So I feel the spirit of God even moving through that statement right there. So it says, sir, 
the woman talking, you have nothing to draw with and the will is deep. Amen. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father, Jacob? He, he gave us the will and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. So the woman referred to Jesus and said, sir. So this woman is still in the physical, but she's exposing her innocence. She's exposing um, that, hey, I really don't know who you are, but, you know, I do know what I usually come to this well for. And so we're going to see where this goes. Verse 13 says, Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. What you have been drinking and what you've been coming to this well for, it hasn't been working for you. All these visits that you have been making to this well, it hasn't been working for you. Every time you go back from this well, you still have wounds. You're still hurt. You're still empty. You're still broken. You still need love. You still need restoration. You still need deliverance. You still need ministry. Every time you come in here for one thing, but you're leaving here still in the same state that you're in. But woman, I promised you that when you leave this well, when you go back to those people, that your reputation is going to change because they already expect the kind of person that you're going to be. They already expect what you're going to come back with. They know you're not going to come back with water. They know that you're not going to come back fixed. They know that you're not going to come back whole. So they already have this reputation of who you are because this has been your routine. You've been coming here for one thing and you've been leaving here with something else and it's not for the purpose. But he says that if you drink from the water that I will give you, it's not the physical water that came out of the well because this has not been working for for you. But the water that I want to give you is going to spring life. Now, why did he say life? He says, because there's death inside of you. Your soul is dying. Your heart is dying. Your joy is dying. Your love for yourself is dying. But he says, the woman, I see the state that you're in and I want to do, so. I want to make some changes in your life. I want to change your mind. I want to change the way that you speak. I even want to change the way that you look at yourself because even what you think of yourself is not where it's supposed to be. And let me prove that to you because this woman had a level of insecurities in herself. All she wanted to be was love. All she wanted wanted to be was loved. Amen. And let me prove that to you. Amen. Because um, she had these voids in her life. Um, the woman said to him, sir, verse 15, the woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty. I have to come here to draw water. Whatever you're talking about, the woman need, the woman said, give it to me. I'm willing and open to receive whatever you willing to give to me. But Jesus, uh, he shifts the conversation. The woman says, I'm ready to receive this water. But Jesus opens up another door and says, um, but says to her, okay, go and call your husband to come here. Now she asked for water and he says, go and call your husband. See, he's pouring the water inside of her. How do we know that? Because what he's doing is he's setting a platform for a um, transparency to take place. He's showing this woman that, yeah, you asked for water, but the water you asking for, you're not about to get because that water wasn't working. I'm going to give you some water that you've never had. I'm about to give you some healing because you're broken. You are a broken woman that's been drinking from the wrong well. Amen. And so he says, go and get your husband. Now you have to say, why would he ask this woman? This woman didn't say anything about her husband. He didn't say anything. She didn't say anything about her relationships. She did not say anything about her past, but he was showing her that, yep, yeah, okay, now that you have opened the door, I'm about to walk in. And let me tell you something. If you want God to step in your life, and if you want ministry to take place, if you want healing to take place, when you ask God to come in, then you are making yourself, Lord, I'm available. Whatever you want to pull out of me, whatever you want to pour inside of me, God, whatever you want to heal in me, whatever you want to restore in my life, God, I am open and willing. But you got to be careful what you ask for, because when you open that door, the Lord says, I will come in. And once I come in, there's going to be some things that's going to be ugly. There's going to be some things that's not going to look the best. It's not going to sound the best. It's not going to be a pretty experience, but I want to let you know that all things are going to work together for your good because that is the beauty of ministry amen 
So he was not trying to, he wasn't trying to make the woman feel uncomfortable, amen. He wasn't trying to embarrass the woman, but what he was trying to show this woman is that I know you better than any man that you have met at this, at this well. I'm not trying to connect with your physical state, but I'm trying to get inside your spirit. I'm trying to get inside of your heart to let you know that I am different than what you have been dealing with. And wherever there is Jesus, there is a difference. Wherever there is Jesus, there is a transformation. Wherever there is Jesus, there's a restoration that's going to take place. So you said, I'm shifting this conversation and I'm changing it to a level that you have never experienced. That's what he was sharing, showing with this woman. So he says, go and call your husband. The woman answered and says, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying that I have no husband for you have had five husbands. Hallelujah. You have had five husbands and the one that you have now is not your husband. So yes, you told the truth. Yes, you are absolutely right. You don't have a husband, but guess what? You have had five and the one that you're with right now, the man that you connected to that you thought was going to restore you, the one that you thought was going to heal you, the one that you thought was going to fill that void, he's not your husband. Wow. Wow. So you got a transparency taking place, but in that transparency, you got transformation that is taking place with this woman. The woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. <laughs> Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me that the hour is coming when neither the mount, this mountain nor Jerusalem will you worship the father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews, but the hour is coming and it is now when the true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and in truth. For the father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming. He who is called Christ, when he comes, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. I, who speak to you, am he. The one that you've been talking about all this time, it's me. I want to just wrap up this. We may look at this woman, but when I look at this story, I see myself. When I look at this story, I see myself. I see a person who was once broken. I see a person who had a lot of areas of his life that was not stable. I see a person that had a lot of empty voids, but I was at that well. I was the one at that well. And <laughs> the Lord met me at the right place at the right time to cause a right transformation to take place. Why do I bring that up today? Because I believe there's some people in this video that needs a well experience. That God is trying to touch your life and God is trying to speak to you. But you got to be willing to say, Lord, I opened up my heart and I opened up my heart to receive whatever you're going to do and whatever you're going to say in my spirit. And I believe that we are in a season right now where the Lord says, will you meet me at the well? But mind you, when you meet me at the well, some changes are going to take place. A transformation is going to take place. A healing is going to take place. I'm not here to embarrass you. I'm not here to hurt you, but I'm here to change you. And I believe that we all have had a well experience in our lives. So I want to even close this video by ending this with a prayer. That if you know that there's a purpose in your life, and if you know that God is doing something mighty in your life, that the Lord wants to meet you at your well. And where there is Jesus, there's transformation and change. Father, let this video bless somebody on this, whoever's watching. And I pray, Lord God, that before we judge this woman in her past, we look at ourselves, God, and we evaluate our own lives. That, Lord, as we walk to that well, are we coming back with what we came for? Or are we leaving with something else? God, I ask that you restore, you heal, you deliver, you set free, and that you touch whoever's watched this video that has been trying everything else and it did not work. And those voids are piling up, but God, I believe that you are a void filler. I pray that whoever's watching this video, that every empty space in their life is sealed by your love, by your comfort, and by your spirit 
and most of all about your relationship with Him. I pray that they allow this video to allow them to evaluate their own lives and say, God, I do believe that you still love me. Work with me. Work with me so that when I leave this well, I leave different than the way that I came. Father, I love you and I bless you. And I ask that you bless this video and bless those that watch it. In Jesus' name, amen.